ईरान उस की पोस्चरिंग हो रही है उस की पॉलिटिक्स है और कितने तक वह गल जा सकती है अज असी गल करेंगे साढ़े इंटरैशनल एक्सपर्ट श्री गुरशेर गिल जी गुरशेर जी तो बहुत बहुत स्वागत है थैंक यू हरजोत गुरशेर सू दसोगे वॉट इज इट दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट असी कुछ हफ्त पहले तो गल की तब तुम दस रहे थे कि लगता नहीं कि वॉर होएगी ऑल दो दोनों साइड तो बड़े स्ट्रोंग पोस्टर्स नजर आ रहे सन बट सू दसोगे कि इस वेले की चल रहा पै और जी रीसेंट डेवलपमेंट्स हुई हैं विद अटैक ऑन सऊदी अरेबियन ऑयल इंटरेस्ट तो वॉट्स द सिचुएशन राइट ना हाँ जी हरजो जी तो असी यू नो सत अठ हफ्ते पहला जो गल कर रहे थे उदू यू नो यू एस एयरक्राफ्ट फ्लीट वॉज डिप्लॉयड इन इन दू नो पर्शियन गल्फ एंड सिचुएशन वॉज स्लाइटली डिफरेंट दे वॉज अ ड्रोन विच वॉज शॉर्ट डाउन हूँ जो देख रहे हो दिस इज ऑबसली एन एस्कलेशन जी जी ईरानियन साइड की हैगी है यू नो जो सऊदी रैमको विच इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट ऑयल कंपनीज इन द वर्ल्ड प्रॉब्ली मे बी द बिगेस्ट ऑयल कंपनी इन द वर्ल्ड एंड कंट्रीब्यूट्स टू ऑलमोस्ट टेन परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल ऑयल प्रोडक्शन वही कई फैसिलिटीज अटैक होया जो हफ्ते पहला थ्रू थ्रू ड्रोन एंड एज सोन एज द अटैक हैपन यू नो फिफ्टी प्रोडक्शन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ um saudi arabia oil production on a daily level uh, was impacted so uh, saudi arabia liye bahut badi cheez hai kyunki as you know saudi arabia is the largest producer of oil and gas in the world mm mm-hmm. they own a dj 50% production uh, uh, effect hoti hai they there's a lot of uh, revenue affected for uh, for a country like saudi arabia which is still an oil dependent uh, economy mm-hmm. um ਤੇ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਕਰੀਏ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਡਰੋਨ ਸਟ੍ਰਾਈਕ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਜੀ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਊਦੀ ਅਰੇਬੀਆ ਇਜ਼ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਕਲੋਜ਼ ਐਲਾਈ ਆਫ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਐਂਡ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਆਫਟਰ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਟਰੰਪ ਹੈਜ਼ ਕਮ ਟੂ ਦ ਪਾਰ देयर ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਵਿਦ ਡੋਨਾਲਡ ਟਰੰਪਸ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜੇ ਡੀ ਫੈਕਟੋ ਰੂਲਰ ਹੈ ਐਨਬੀਐਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਊਦੀ ਅਰੇਬੀਆ ਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਸਟਰਾਂਗ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਸਾਊਦੀ ਅਰੇਬੀਆ ਹੈਜ਼ ਗੋਟ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਵੈਪਨਰੀ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਡਨ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਪਰਚੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਦੀ ਡਿਫੈਂਸ ਇੰਡਸਟਰੀ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਐਸ so it is surprising ki as a sophisticated attack ho bhi ona di prime property te hoya hai despite fully knowing that it's it's a us ally they are targeting uh, it, it is actually very surprising uh, gushir ji is is it confirmed that uh, the attack was uh, uh, done by iranians so it is not confirmed however uh, you know the us defense secretary mr mike brown Pompeo he has uh, unofficially obviously accused Iran of this uh, and there is reasons for it ki in a specific sophisticated jere drones ne ji jo to se middle east dekho so number one who claimed this responsibility for this strike who the remnants from yemen they claimed it. now those are those are rebel groups mm-hmm. they are not organized armies and they don't have technology like this even if they have technology like this they don't have the infrastructure like this to to conduct a sophisticated uh, air strike 700 miles deep into you know an enemy territory mm-hmm. so jeda eh hoya hai jehdi hun news aa rahi hai jehde mike pump to pe ho bhi keh rahe ne ki this has happened from the northern side or whether it has happened from you know an infrastructure which iran holds mm-hmm. uh, because the level of sophistication not in terms of just executing it but implementing it from the technology side you know sophisticated drone which could uh deflect the radar system of saudi arabia and carry out precision you know um, uh attacks through you know either air to surface missiles mm-hmm. um is is highly you know we haven't seen that happen in not only just just middle east but in in um, in uh, in the world in the last few years i mean you know only us has done something like this before it, the gushir ji it looks like a direct challenge to us is is escalation the isle uh, key wajah why is iran doing this so uh, it, 
Iran, uh, for my analysis, I'll give you just my point of view. Mm-hmm. I think Iran is at a juncture where they have figured out a couple of things. One, they have figured out that um, uh, you know, Iran is a Shia majority and the Sunni majority remains, you know, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, and, and the other GCC countries which are supporting Saudi, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Iran has figured out that it remains uh, number one or one of the most important players in the Middle East and in that area for a couple of reasons. One, uh, now the, uh, the Iraq has shifted into a, it was always the Shia majority, but since it was run by a Sunni leader, uh, Saddam Hussein, it has now converted into, uh, you know, a Shia majority. And then comes, um, you know, Turkey. And then with the mix of Russia in there, Iran has figured out a way to deal with the Trump administration. So, I know that what has happened with Trump's foreign policies, whether it is North Korea or, you know, whether it's Russia, whether it's, um, you know, um, with the close allies like the, you know, EU and um, the important players, Mm -hmm. they feel that, you know, Trump does not, or at least, you know, their thinking is that uh, Donald Trump may not want to engage in war. And, um, uh, you know, U.S. is preoccupied with a lot of its own things internally. And, and, and at this point of time, with the backing of Russians and, and, and probably Syria as an ally, and, and, and Iran has seen what Trump has played into in Syria and, you know, automatically, go, he, you know, he's gotten backed off from it. Mm-hmm. So they feel that, you know, they are at a stronger position in terms of negotiation. Mm-hmm. And this is one way for, for Iran to bring... Uh, the U.S. to negotiating table, and and that's what I think my analysis is, is that uh, it is a direct uh, you know escalation, and and I don't think the world is ready for a war, and neither is U.S. I, I personally feel so. I, I think this is probably only, you know one of the ways for Iran to bring U.S. to the table. And and you think uh, the way President Trump has uh, dealt with. Uh, Korean leadership or other places that uh, that gives a signal uh, to the Iranians that uh, Mr. P- uh, President is not very really serious about uh, getting into an armed conflict and uh, he wants to bring uh, the president to the table for negotiating the nuclear deals. Is that what you say? So saying? I think there are some some learnings for for Iran. Uh, you know, when they look at uh, this administration dealing with North Korea, for a simple reason is that. Nothing has been achieved in North Korea, but, you know, the president himself has met with the leader mm-hmm. at least a couple of times, you know, for a summit and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is nothing signed, there's nothing agreed. Every time uh, Kim Jong-un needs to, to prove a point of bringing U.S. to the table, it just fires some mm-hmm. projectiles and, and then everybody gets alarmed. And, and then there is a talk about, you know, Kim Jong-un sending a letter to Trump and, and then there is another summit plan. So, so I think they have learned that um, dealing in North Korea with nothing has been achieved and it has been all over the news that this may be one way to do or deal with it. And, and given that um, Trump's uh, foreign policy is very spontaneous and it's not well thought out and it basically speaks about just a man's thought more than, you know, entire infrastructure, whether it's intelligence infrastructure or the defense support infrastructure. It is what Donald Trump wants to do and not the, you know, the U.S. policy is backing it up kind of a thing. And, and, and uh, we, uh, uh, we see that uh, by the movement of uh, national security advisors, we, we recently saw that uh, John uh, Bolton was uh, asked to leave as well. Uh, is there anything uh, we can uh, read into uh, with those facts? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, look at it. This is, you know, John Bolton uh, was number third, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, defense um, um, advisor for, for the president. And now we are at Robert O'Brien. I mean, if you look at the history, I mean, it was General Flynn first. You know, he obviously uh, uh, had to leave because of all the legal issues he was in. And then H.R. McMaster uh, decided to resign. Mm-hmm. And then came John Bolton, which was ex- he was extremely aggressive and, and bullish about Iran, mm-hmm. uh, obviously for his support for M.A. M.E.K. Um, and one of the reasons I think that they had a fallout was uh, uh, John Bolton has always advocated the strongest measures against Iran. And he, you know, John Bolton, as we spoke about, mm-hmm. as I spoke about this, this topic in, at, you know, in, in you know, at 
at your show about two months back जी, जी, जी. that um, you know he he wanted a regime change <laughs> and i think that the advice what he was giving to the president was extremely hawkish and and would have probably resulted in a war already जी. and i don't think that president trump wants to get into an issue he might have a very different approach towards foreign or foreign policy but i don't think he gushesh ji will we'll take a small break, uh, break here asi tar na gal karde ha ek choti ji break de baad ब्रेक के बाद थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है तो गुरशेर जी थोड़े कहन के अनुसार अगर इस वेले भी ट्रंप एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कोई टफ टॉक कर रही है वो सिर्फ टॉक ही है कोई लड़ाई की आसार तो नज़र नहीं आ रहे आई थिंक मैनू जो लड़ाई के आसार है या तो कोई स्ट्रेटिजिक uh you know they might do a strategic surgical strike mm -hmm. on on some corner of iran to just to prove a point ji or bomb one of the fields but i don't think there is going to be an all out of war you don't think uh we hope for that uh gushir ji us de alawa badi sanu kuch uncertainty halle tak nazar aa rahi hai brexit nu laake sanu dassoge us de is ki chalda paya aur jehde nave prime minister utthe aaye uk vich ohna da ki stance hai aur ki chalda paya utthe अपनी पार्टी के मेंबर्स हैव स्टूड अगेंस्ट हिम यस फॉर ऑबवियस रीजंस वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट इश्यूज इज द इशू ऑफ नॉर्दर्न आयरलैंड जी आई मीन द अंजे तो नो पता ही है जमे हिस्ट्री नाल जदों ए गुड फ्राइडे द एग्रीमेंट हुई सी जी नॉर्दर्न आयरलैंड बिकेम मच मोर स्टेबल एंड द वायलेंस एक्चुअली सब्सिडेड बट हुन जे जे तुसी ब्रेक्सिट कर दे हुन दैट देयर इज अ बॉर्डर ड्रॉन बिटवीन आयर रिपब्लिक ऑफ आयरलैंड एंड नॉर्दर्न आयरलैंड सो दैट बिकम्स अ big point internally for discussions between um, you know the members of parliament or or the decision uh, decision makers in the government out there ji 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 uh gushesh ji e isle jo uh, uk vich vich chalda pe hai and uh, you know their relation with eu and what's going on between nato do you think if uh, there's some armed conflict with uh, iran uh, us is uh, in a position to put a very strong coalition for the war internal issues between nato and the funding of nato which donald trump has as as obviously advocated uh, will not hamper a coalition against iran i don't think so even though what meets the eye in, in front and there's a uh, you know difference of opinion whether with uh, uh, macron and in france and But in a situation a where uh, everyone hell else has still supported the iran deal and they have uh, in a way held on to that deal do you think there might be disagreement with uh, us on uh, going to a war with iran so if you position this question this way Ji. then it becomes tricky because rest of the members are still abiding by by the iran deal and only you has just dropped out so so it can become tricky unless and until uh, you know uh, uh, us can prove that iran is a player which is destabilizing the region and causing conflict mm -hmm. if that is 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 the case then i think nato will support uh, but you know given the fact that that you know the iran nuclear deal us has defaulted on the deal it will become tricky because um as you know rest of the members are still trading with iran and they have no issues you know uh, economically working with iran on a lot of other factors mm -hmm. uh gushesh ji ek jeda uh, constant uh, uh, ek pareshani da mudda jeda banya hoya hai us vich uh, economy vaste aur uh, sari uh, country vaste oh hai ga china de naal trade war ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸੋਗੇ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਪਿਆ ਇਸਲੇ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਵਿਚ ਟ੍ਰੇਡ ਵਾਰ ਹੈਜ਼ ਦੇ ਬੀਨ ਸਮ ਐਸਕਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਔਰ ਹੈਜ਼ ਦੇ ਬੀਨ ਸਮ ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਓਵਰ ਇਟ ਨਾਊ ਸੋ 
ਐਸਕਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਡੀ ਐਸਕਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ देयर ਆਰ ਕੌਨਫੀਡੈਂਸ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਮੈਜਰਸ ਹੁਣ ਆਫ ਲੇਟਲੀ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਹਫਤੇ देयर ਵਾਸ ਕੌਨਫੀਡੈਂਸ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਮੈਜਰਸ ਫਰਮ ਯੂ ਐਸ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਯੂ نو ਯੂ ਐਸ ਐਕਸਟੈਂਡਡ ਦਾ ਡੈਡਲਾਈਨ ਫੋਰ ਐਡਿੰਗ ਮੋਰ 250 ਬਿਲੀਅਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਸ ਵਿਚ ਕੁਡ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਯੂ نو ਦੀ ਨਿਊ ਇਨਕਰੀਸਡ ਟੈਰਫਸ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਊਟੀਜ਼ and china on the other hand responded positively as well by uh, buying more of uh, you know the grains and 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 the pork and and the uh, the medicines uh, specifically uh, for cancer from from us mm-hmm. so i think both understand the nature of of the trade war uh, both has a lot to lose from, from you know and especially china has a lot to lose and i think uh the, the position of strength uh, our president uh, has right now is is that because of the trade deficit it's, i mean they cannot counter um the balance of trade deficit you know overnight so if if us decides to impose everything on 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 china import i mean china is going to lose big time uh but uh, long story short uh, donald trump also realizes that this could affect his uh, re-election campaign next year so he also has to trade very carefully ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਯੂ ਐਸ ਇਕਨੋਮੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਥੋੜੀ ਸਲੋ ਡਾਊਨ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਫੇਅਰ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਦੈਟ ਰਿਲੇਟਿਡ ਟੂ ਦਿਸ ਟ੍ਰੇਡ ਵਾਰ ਵਿਦ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਦੈਟ ਦੈਟਸ ਦੈਟਸ ਅਮਾਲਗਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਵਨ ਇਸ ਟ੍ਰੇਡ ਵਾਰ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਐਸ ਸੂਨ ਐਸ ਥੇਰ ਇਸ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਟ੍ਰੇਡ ਵਾਰ ਯੂ نو ਦ ਮਾਰਕੀਟ ਫਲਕਚੂਏਟਸ ਹੈਵਲੀ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਸੀਨ ਦੈਟ ਇਨ ਦ ਲਾਸਟ ਟੂ ਆਰ ਥ੍ਰੀ ਕੁਆਰਟਰਸ ਨਾਟ ਜਸਟ ਯੂ نو ਵਨ ਵੀਕ ਸਾਈਕਲ ਔਰ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਲਾਈਕ ਦੈਟ ਸੋ ਦੈਟ ਇਸ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ نو underlying current for economy mm-hmm. i think overall economy my impression is that you know uh, one of the biggest drivers of economy is construction and real, real estate there is some softness which is happening especially on the west coast mm-hmm. um job market is still extremely strong so that is a good sign but interest rates are low and has constantly been been extremely low which is not a healthy cycle because you need the market to maneuver itself and if you keep the rates low artificially for a long period of time mm-hmm. you're artificially controlling the dynamics of a free market mm-hmm. and inflation goes up as well absolutely uh but uh, gushir ji kuch industries benefit hoye in is uh, trade war than all jedi garlic industry uh, uh, we learned uh, has made huge gains because of the tariffs uh, put on chinese uh, products so it's not that uh, the us is losing everywhere is it right i mean you know the, 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 i don't know specifically about the garlic industry but uh, yes uh, i mean pork industry has benefited i mean uh, there has been news about uh, china had to dig into their their pork reserves believe it or not because one of the biggest consumers of pork in the world so uh, even though uh, there were talks about tariffs on american products but they haven't touched pork Mm-hmm. and as a, as a matter of fact if you see yearly export of pork has grown in 2019 despite the talk of uh, trade war mm-hmm. uh gushir ji ek jehdi cheez uh, pichle kuch dina vich uh, kafi uh, uh, limelight ich aayi oh si ki uh, us the proposal uh, to buy greenland w- was that serious stuff or was it some kind of a joke I don't know what you want me to say on it but um, at the end of the day I mean our president thing does things uh, a bit differently than others I mean yes uh, history has spoken about you know countries acquiring new land and, and and places but it's always done through proper channels and um I think we all know the background of Donald Trump and he has always been a big success uh, factor in the real estate business and he thought that you know, since greenland is available and and you know russia can move in strategically from a point of view of um, setting up its bases and and uh, and other military um, uh, deployments mm-hmm. uh, i he thought it might be a good idea to just buy greenland from denmark mm-hmm. but it's not for sale and you know nobody wants to um engage in that conversation except for um, i guess our uh, our president so um there was a bit of seriousness around uh, his approach but mm-hmm. i think that uh, the world laughed it off but, but w- w- was there a, a serious proposal or was it just at so. the stage of uh, checking out the waters i think, I think it was uh, it was his thought which, uh, which became public and and uh, and uh, mr trump doesn't want to be called that uh, it, it, it was on a serious thing but i don't think it was a serious uh, 
I, I don't think there was a lot of analysis done by the government or an approach or, you know, opening up uh, channels of communication with Denmark and getting the feeder. I think it was just done as a, as a maybe as a publicity stunt. I don't know, as a matter of fact. Gushet there was ji. nothing serious behind it. <laughs> Gushet Ji, Sajnar Gal Karanda, Tawla, Bohat Bohat Shukriya. These are important updates. Or uh, you are leaving us uh, with some uh, good feeling somewhere that there might not be a war. There might be some uh, negotiation which is going on. Tawla, Bohat Bohat Shukriya. Asi, it take Choti Ji break lange. Tawla, mil diya. Ek break de baad. The way forward is Tawla, Phir Tu Swagat hai. Main Tawla, host Harjot Singh. Hun, Asi, थोड़ी डोमेस्टिक डेवलपमेंट्स की गल करा यू एस कांग्रेस में कुछ हेयरिंग्स शुरू हुई हैं जिन्हों कुछ लोग इम्पीचमेंट हेयरिंग कह रहे हैं प्रेजिडेंट ट्रंप की इम्पीचमेंट लिय और आ, कुछ लोग हाली इस टू क्लीयरली डिफाइन नहीं कर रहे कि इफ दे आर इम्पीचमेंट हेयरिंग्स असी इस बारे ज़्यादा जाने साडे पोलिटिकल एनालिस्ट श्री जैक राजपाल जी तो जैक जी थोड़ा स्वागत है जैक जी सू दसोगे आर देयर फॉर्मल इम्पीचमेंट हेयरिंग स्टार्ट इन द यू एस कांग्रेस नो हर जो नो इट्स नॉट अ फॉर्मल इम्पीचमेंट हेयरिंग वॉट हैपन दिस वीक इज वॉज अ सिग्निफिकेंट डिवेलपमेंट दो के साथ जरिए हाउस की जी जुडिशरी कमेटी हैगी उन्होंने लास्ट वीक दे चेंज सम ऑफ देयर रूल्स ऑफ द रेगुलर कमेटी हेयरिंग्स What it means is कि कमेटी दी हेरिंग्स आम होंडी होंडी and कमेटी जड़ी है कि बंदियाँ तो बुलाने हैं कि various people for different reasons. जी. So they said कि now onwards all the hearings will be held under some special rules. Now interestingly, वो जो ना rules बनाए हैं. जी. They are very same as the rules of a typical impeachment investigation. So. It's not a formal impeachment hearing that has started, mm -hmm. but the hearing the format has been. उन्हें बिल्कुल कोई और रखी है कि जड़ी की impeachment जो तो कितना जानता है किसी का वो वगैरह कितनी है. So that's why it's a little, little bit confusing. A key format uh, have they laid down some charges जिस दो पर वो गल करते पे ना what's going on? Yeah, the idea is basically they are trying to find कि किधर वक्त की हुई है सी विद सिटिंग प्रेसिडेंट डोनाल्ड ट्रंप एस वी ऑल नो असी अपने प्रीवियस शो से कवर भी की था एक काफी वक्त एक टॉपिक्स आए हुए हैं फोरफ्रंट चे कि वेदर दिस मेडलिंग विद द यूएस इलेक्शंस बाय रशिया ओदे विच ट्रंप या ट्रंप के जिधर कैंपेन या उन अलग कोई हाथी सो देर लॉट ऑफ Owns a lot of properties, hotels, etc., etc. Jide che ki, you know, he has vested interest. Ode which foreign dignitaries, foreign officials are ke rende hain. Ji. So, you know, all these issues and peripheral issues related to that. Jack Paul ji. These cause related to an impeachment for Trump or not. Ji ji ji. Uskar ke they have started some hearings which are directed towards aids related to. जैक जी अस एक बड़ा टर्म सुनते हैं दोबारा दोबारा एमोलूमेंट्स क्लॉज सू दसोगे की है एमोलूमेंट्स क्लॉज एमोलूमेंट्स क्लॉज बेसिकली जी है वर्डिंग इज यू नो कोट एंड कोर्ट इट से नो टाइटल ऑफ नोबिलिटी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल शेड बी ग्रांटेड बाई यूनाइटेड स्टेट You know, which is very common in European uh, culture and all that. G. Then it says that no person holding any office of profit, you know, shall, without the consent of Congress, accept any present gifts, etc., etc., mm -hmm. from any foreign state or king or prince or so and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this is in nature what the Emoluments Clause is. G. Uh, now we all know President Trump. He owns a lot of properties, hotels, uh, resorts, and so and so forth. Just take you foreigners like they rent the hand and vagera vagera. So does that you know it raises the issue of emoluments clause again and again. 
ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਰਟੀ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਡਾਈਵੈਸਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਸਟਿਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਨਾਰਮਲੀ ਇੱਕ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਟਰਸਟ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬਣਾ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਯੂਰ no longer a beneficiary but i understand ki uh, donald trump continues to be a beneficiary of uh, his businesses is that true yes yes yeah yeah uh, he continues to be a beneficiary but at the same time you know there are some scholars who argue that the emoluments clause is a language of the office of profit or Ji. trust you know it probably just refers to only those who are appointed and and not people who are elected so mm-hmm. again you know it's a uh, you know again left to legal interpretation Gee. how it can be handled this kind of a clause a kadi challenge we knew aya hai ga the court she the most recent challenge to this clause or related to this clause was done in uh, uh, appeals court in fourth circuit they say ki uh, the maryland district had uh, taken a lawsuit against tram Mm-hmm. for all these issues he yeah, have come the own properties and, and uh, it falls in violation of uh, emoluments clause ji but the uh, appeals court fourth district basically they threw that court case court case away ji ji but ji. the manner in which they threw that court case away was very striking they said that this is a wastage of court's time so that sort of brings the uh, the question in mind that a clause as raiga ki jehda kadi challenge nahi hoya nahi hoya hai ga in the last 230 years of its establishment mm-hmm. and a clause is the adequate relevance hai bhi ki nahi hai ki given the ambiguity and the most recent uh, judgments from the fourth circuit uh, court of appeal uh, jackpal ji uh, assi tode naal uh, gal karange ek choti ji break de baad द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है आज असि गल कर रहे हैं श्री जैग राजपाल जी नाल अपनी यूएस विच रीसेंट पॉलिटिकल डेवलपमेंट्स दी जैग जी आज कोई न्यूज़ बड़ी प्रचलित हो रही है कि इंस्पेक्टर जनरल दी कोई रिपोर्ट है दैट देयर हैज बीन सम रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम अ विसल ब्लोअर फ्रॉम विद इन द व्हाइट हाउस रिगार्डिंग सम प्रोमिसेस और सम कॉल्स मेड बाय द प्रेसिडेंट टू अ फॉरेन फॉरेन हेड ऑफ द स्टेट इस बारे तो सी कुछ दस सकते हो सर या जो यू नो एक कंप्लेंट फाइल की थी कि सी 12 अगस्त नो टू इंटेलिजेंस कम्युनिटीज इंस्पेक्टर जनरल माइकल एटकिंसन जी uh you know two weeks later uh, he forwarded the complaint to director of national intelligence joseph mcguire by law mcguire was supposed to be turning over the complaint to the house and senate intelligence committee Ji. which he didn't do so mm-hmm. uh in that he cited that uh, you know the the whistle blower and the complaint involved koi uh, army executive branch the jira involved the and tawa se ho the jurisdiction cha and then he see and it was not a urgent concern uh, that's why he did not pass it to the house and senate judiciary committee mm-hmm. but having said that because usne kya hai ga ki ek koi executive branch ka banda involved see uh, most likely i think it looks like probably is with uh, donald trump on a general recently they he spoken to the british prime minister the russian president French president and the Ukrainian president. Ji ji ji. It's a ongoing uh, thing. Aan wale samay ch asi dekhde hain ki how does it develop? It it has to be taken uh, by the Congress and I guess they are doing something in that regards. Uh, uh, Jack ji sanu dasso ek California vich jo uh, EPA nu leke uh, jo is le conflict chalda pe hai. What is what is going on in California? Yeah, you know, you know California has been in the forefront uh, the last couple of days uh pehli day you know the uh, pehli news that it is trump and the trump and trump administration they have already you know for the last uh, almost a year and plus they have claimed that given the status of california as a sanctuary state mm-hmm. uh, especially san francisco area trump had already warned that he is going to use epa as a weapon to prosecute california ji mm-hmm. so a jadi a problem bade dino to inte i think chal rahi hai ki and uh, immigration like it from past that ki kuch na kuch karo aur ne kaafi 
action passed the ten where it he got overruled by courts. Mm -hmm. So Trump had said he EPA no may use karanga. So finally, those in Pele when he was in California, mm -hmm. he declared that he is basically taking the waiver off. Mm -hmm. A federal government, the EPA department, has given a waiver to the California state. No, yes. which is California stricter emission standards implement can be done on top of the Clean Air Act. Yes. The waiver that is granted is basically EPA has to pull out. So yes. this was the big news, um, which now does not allow California to put. जो जो इशू है वो ये है कि जेडे कैलिफोर्निया दे एमिशन स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं वो ज़्यादा स्ट्रिक्ट है के फेडरल तो इस इट राइट हाँ जी यस यस डी क्लीन एयर एक्ट सेज दैट एवरीबॉडी हैज़ टू मेंटेन डोज मिनिमम फेडरल स्टैंडर्ड्स जी but California, if they want, they can have a higher standard, ji, 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 ji. provided they meet certain criteria. Yeah. And if those criteria meet, karde hai, California has a waiver, and that waiver has a process aega by which the EPA approves. At oh, least, I understand at least 13 states have adopted those uh, California standards and it, it comes as a surprise that the party that speaks of state rights all the time and they are the one who uh, are the state apni uh, a standard nahi rak sakda. I see that as a contradiction. I see that as a hypocrisy. Uh, Jack Ji, Sanu hun dasoge ki JD uh, Democratic presidential nomination the process hai, o kithe hai? we had a debate last week, how did that debate go? Uh, you know, yes, we had the third debate, uh, you know, and it was uh, very interesting. Pelli uh, uh, ke jede 20 candidates ki in uh, debate number two, o katke te hun das candidates ho gai Ji. Uh, there were 10 significant candidates who were left out. So mm -hmm. First of all, the candidates who uh, United States joined Kitasi was uh, Joe Biden, Cory Brooker, uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Julian Castro, Kamala Harris, uh, and uh, uh, Amy Klobuchar, Pedro uh, Rook, Sanders, Warren, and Andrew Yang. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, uh, they had uh, some cutoff threshold on number of polling and uh, number of donors before a candidate can qualify. Ji. The similar threshold is also applicable to the 15th October. No, it's not debate or anything. Both of which we similar criteria have been implemented. Mm -hmm. But as the debate we see, uh, it was very interesting. Because earlier we were that there were 10 candidates. It was just held on one day versus mm -hmm. the first two debates that spread over two days. One mm -hmm. uh, is but a different thing uh, observed between the first two debates and the third debate. Mm -hmm. yeah, was, all the candidates uh, came around backing President Obama. Yes, yes, yes. We had a show in the first uh, one or two debates. There was a kind of divide amongst the candidates mm -hmm. and a lot of candidates uh, bashed President Obama and his policy. Mm -hmm. But in this uh, debate, it was a unanimous consensus that Whatever Obama has done was good for us. Jagji, we are running out of time. Does uh, Biden continue to be the front runner? Yes, uh, Biden continues to be the big runner. The other big uh, winner of that sector debate was Elizabeth Warren. Yes, yes, yes. I see some, uh, some movement in her campaign. She has gained some momentum. Uh, Jack Ji, Sardinal Gal Karanda, thank you very much. This is our show. You will be able to move forward.